Okay, so I am going to be making a video on the process of how I do my Alpha Friendship bracelets. So, the first thing I do is, I'm going to get right into it. So, the first thing I do is, I look up patterns that I really want to make. For example, Valentine's Day is coming up. And what I tend to do sometimes is go around Instagram. I get inspired by a lot of people on Instagram and stuff that they make so I did run across this page a few months ago and there's this pattern that she made that she has which is this one and I really liked this heart bracelet that she made it's super cute I love it and I really want to make it so that's what I do so what I would do is I would screenshot that and save it to my pictures so after I'm done with that um, I am using my iPad to like show you guys these things so I don't have photo grid on my my iPad yet um, but I usually screenshot like a bunch of patterns that I want to make and I put it on photo grid and then when I add all the pictures on the white like a, I put it on a white background so I put all the pictures the screenshots of all the bracelets I want to make on a white background then I print it out on my printer and then I would get a sheet of paper like this. So I basically already have all the patterns that I do want to make for Valentine's Day. Um, so it's like right here. And then after that, I, what I do is I count like the, the squares, each and every square, since I am going to be making this into a bracelet, I'm going to start from right here and go down. And this pattern has 11 um, base strings in it, so I'm going to need 11 strings. And I just made the cow one. So to just make the, cow, the Valentine's Day cow bracelet, Valentine's Day cow bracelet, yeah. So I just made it and the pattern of that is right here. So I just made that one. And I also made, I also have another sheet of paper where I have the alpha ones, the alpha keychains that I made, which I these two right here. I did make the gnome one and the bear one. So like, that's those two that I made also. And yeah. So that's the first thing you gotta do when I'm starting to make alpha friendship bracelets or any pattern. It doesn't even matter which one. I put all my ideas on a sheet of paper and that's when I start to, um, yeah, I start to go like one by one and making all of them. I don't think this strawberry cow is really much of a Valentine's Day, but since it has pink in it, it did give me a Valentine's Day vibe. I did already make that Alpha Friendship bracelet um, a few months back. I just didn't add the strawberries in it because I just didn't want to add the strawberries in it. But this time I am going to add the strawberries in it. So now moving on to this pattern. This is the one that I'm going to be making for this video. So I'm going to need 11 strings. Okay, so then when I start to make my Alpha Friendship bracelet... I get all my colors ready so um this is one that i did already use this white but for some reason when i make bracelets like the colors of that bracelet starts to like get on the actual like string like the especially the white like it just i feel like it has a tint of red in it because it was getting um knotted onto a red base like a red base of strings so I don't really want to use this and I just don't feel like using that so what I do is I just kind of start with a new one so I am going to use white for um I know it's pink but I'm going to use white for that and for the eyes I do have black which is right here I'm almost done with it, but I still use what I can off of that. And then I also have the red that I'm going to use for this, which is this red right here. It's 321 DMC. And yeah, so now that I have all my colors picked out, I'm going to start 
cutting the bass string. So I don't use um, DMC. The only bass string that I ever use is DMC Pearl. So I don't know if I have some already. Okay, so I do have some DMC Pearl right here. Just this DMC Pearl. And I actually did buy like a box of DMC Pearl. I just wanted to add on here that this is the only string I use for my base. I use DMC Pearl only. Um, I realized that my knots are like better on it. I don't know why, it just, it's, it's different for me. So I did order these off eBay. I ordered a pack of white, um, it's the size 5M, and I also ordered a pack of black, which is the size 5M as well. And the number on it is 310, and then the, the name on this one is um, Blonde. So yeah, and then I also ordered a bunch off of Macari. I usually order in like big bundles, so I did pay like $30 for all of this. Uh, and yeah, that's all I wanted to add on that part. I will be leaving the link in the description down below for these ones. These are just bundles from like people who sell them. So there's, I can't really leave a link, but I do recommend like going on Macari on the search bar. You could just put like DMC Pearl 5M and like a bunch of stuff will pop up. So yeah. Okay, so now that I have this DMC Pearl that I think I used it on some, well, I know I used it on something else. I just don't know what exactly. So I'm going to just reuse it. Um, I don't ever, I think I always throw away my scraps, but I don't ever throw away the DMC Pearl just in case I do ever need it, which I usually do need it most of the time. So now that I have it, um, I usually like my bracelets to be about six inches long, which when I mean six inches long, I mean from here to here. So if I put this right here, it'll be six inches long. And the way I measure this is I grab I fold it in half and then I measure it and I know I'm not gonna use like that much so I just take it I make it a little shorter I measure it again and I feel like that'll be good because I do need the ties at the end so the ties have to be a little long as well so just to make sure the ties are long, I want to leave a good amount of string at the end. So that should be good enough, which is about like this long right here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it right here. I'm just gonna cut it like that. All right, since the alpha is 11 strings long, I mean, 11 strings wide, my bad. It's gonna be 11 strings wide, so it's an odd number and it's not. When it's an even number, it's easier to do like the bracelets, but when it's odd, you basically have to take one string out and I definitely can do that. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Okay, I cut six strings, so that makes it 12 for now. So now, since um, I'm going to be using, you see how it's like pink for the background? I'm going to be using white. Um, the inspiration did come from the page that I found. I'm going to post her page up here and you guys should check her out. She has makes really good stuff. I love her stuff. I've seen, like, I've always seen her on my explore page and it just, wow. I love her stuff, it's amazing. Anyways, um, now we're gonna get to this part right here. This is how I normally make my bracelets. So I'm gonna be doing this part and then these. The, I don't, honestly, I don't know what it, this is called, a teardrop or something like that. Um, I saw, usually how I learn how to make things is I look at people's work and I just, try to figure out how to do it on my own just by looking at what they made yeah that's how i learned um so 
I don't know if this is how you do it, but this is how I've done it. Um, okay, so we're gonna make the this. I used to call it a wrap loop because it's wrapped. It's a loop, but it's like wrapped up. So that's what I used to call it back then. I'm not sure how you call this. Um, I did see this from uh, this part right here. I saw it from, who did I see it from? Um, Beyond Bracelets, she has a YouTube channel and she's who I've learned a lot of stuff from just by looking at her stuff on YouTube. I've learned a lot of stuff from her and I did see that she did this one time so that's how I learned. That was like way back when though, um, when I was a kid. I'm old now, but yeah. So, okay, so now we're gonna make that loop thingy and this is what I normally do so I leave a a fair amount of string here at the end because we are going to be using um not we but me I'm going to be using like a lot of this to make the loop right here and then I also have to use it for this part right here so I'm going to just show you okay so now I folded my strings in half, make sure that they are good, and that's what I do. And then what I do is I grab this, I try to see how big I want my loop to be. So I want it to be like, maybe like right here to right here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it right here. And then I'm gonna grab it like this. And then there okay so I don't use a clipboard um, it's so funny because the first time I actually did a bracelet was without a clipboard um, I learned with just doing it like, like this and um, I remember that I was like 12 I'm 25 now so a little long ago and my mom was like your birthday already passed I, I wasn't able to get you anything I just want to take you to Walmart you can pick out whatever you want so we went to Walmart and she told me I could pick whatever I want and then I got a box, you know, for like how to make friendship bracelets. And when I got home, I was trying like all night how to figure it out because literally it's just a sheet of paper and it tells you how to make like the knots and stuff. So that's how I learned how to make knots off a sheet of paper. And I was just... I felt like I wanted to cry because I couldn't understand, but I finally made a candy stripe. That was the first pattern I ever learned how to make. I was so excited because I just couldn't believe I made it. And then I gave it to my mom. I think she still has it. And it, was, it looks hilarious because, you know, like, what the hell is that? It looks funny. It's like my first bracelet that I ever made and I'm really proud of it. I was super proud of it at the time. And then I started to make chevrons the next day. Um, but learning the backwards knot was like the worst part ever because I did not understand the instructions at all. Like I really just didn't, I really didn't. And then when I finally got the hang of it, like on the third day, I was like so happy that I started making chevrons like every day like mixing the colors and everything and then finally I went on YouTube and that's when I discovered Beyond Bracelets. I think her channel is still active. I'm not too sure. I don't really get on YouTube as much anymore as I used to but yeah I was like what? Oh my god you can make like different designs. Whoops I messed up. You can make different designs and stuff but yeah that's how I learned how to make friendship bracelets and then over the years, I kind of just abandoned it and then like I got back to doing it, abandoning, so forth and so forth. But lately, I've been on it since twenty mid-2020, I started to get back onto my friendship bracelet hobby. I think that loop is like way too big. But they match, look. Okay. So I'm gonna like try to, usually what I do is like scoot this up like that and make it a little shorter like this. 
and the bottom like one got like a little longer than the other one but it's okay I can deal with that so yeah so that is how I do that but yeah that's the story on how I started to make friendship bracelets okay so now what we're gonna do is we're going to make this part right here you know I'm gonna look up a thing where I can find out what this is called or what because I just don't know like I said I look at things and I'm like okay well I'm gonna make that I'm gonna do it I'm gonna make it and I figure it out and that's it so anyways now that we're done with this part what I do is I'm gonna make this thing right here see how it's like small and it goes big and then yeah i'm gonna make that thing okay so i'm gonna do this side first right here wait which side no, 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 no. see how i didn't cut this off um i'm not planning on cutting it off at all so we're leaving that alone and i'm gonna just do this side right here <clears throat> Okay, so I do feel like my lube is a little too big. I think I can work with that. All right, so the plan is to, um, the plan is to make this, like I said. So what I've seen and what I've learned is, um, when I start to do it, I count the strings. Okay, so I do have... I do have an even amount for now, right? Okay, so... What I'm going to do is... Grab, like, the middle. Since it's not odd, the two are in the middle. But I'm going to make... I'm going to probably put three on this side. One in the middle. Two on this side. Okay. So, I'm going to make a backwards knot on those three. Then I'm going to go to the middle, make one knot like this in the middle. And then I'm going to make the last backward knot on the last two strings like that. Literally just like that. Okay, so now that I'm done with that part, I'm gonna make a four knot, four knots. And I think since there's one in the middle, now I'm gonna drag another one in the middle. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna make a four knot on these two, like this. And then, sorry, my kid is singing. I don't know if you can hear him, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make one four knot on the one in the middle. Then I'm gonna, since I did drag another one into the middle, it's gonna be one individual four knot on that one too. And then the last two is gonna be one four knot on the last two. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another backwards knot, but this time they're going to be all like individually knotted on. So it's going to be six knots. So we did, we literally went from three, four, and now six. This is how I do it like all the time though. Okay. Now... Okay, so now I'm just gonna keep going till I reach the middle and then we're gonna stop I know I'm doing it with my hand because this is how I oh this is how I always do it because with the clipboard on oh, just I feel like it's just it takes too long and then the knots are not tight enough and it's just really aggravating that's how I feel at least okay so now that I got in the middle I'm gonna stop right here. I usually like 
tighten it up a little with my nail I go like this and voila we're done you see that okay so now we're gonna do this side and we're gonna do the exact same thing except we're gonna go backwards so it's gonna be forward backwards forward okay so now we're gonna do this side and since I didn't cut this off. Yeah, we're, I'm gonna be using the whole entire like roll of that. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab three. It's gonna be three like this. I'm gonna do a forward knot. And then I'm gonna grab the middle one and do one forward knot like that. So I'm gonna do the backwards knot. Like this. There you go. All right. And uh, I'm gonna just keep going until like they match. So now, we're gonna do four, I mean the backwards knot, my bad. The backwards knots on, so it is two, the two one, and then we're gonna do the other backward knot on the one that's like alone, the one that was like alone. And now since this row is gonna have four strings, I take this one out from the, the group of three, I take it out and then I, do it like one individual knot on that one and do one backwards knot oh my god okay and then the last two is one backwards knot on that those two together um okay so there you go like that okay and now we're gonna do the forward knots, like six individual forward knots. So that's what I'm gonna do the last row like that. <sighs> I do this all the time when I make, well, I feel like it's easier when it's like odd numbers on each one, but since, I mean, it is an odd number, but when you fold it in half, since I did add an extra string, which is going to be 12 strings for now, this is how I always do it when it comes to the odd number bracelets. Okay, so I'm going to keep going until I reach the middle part. Okay, and I'm almost there, I'm almost there. My hands do start to hurt, like, no lie. Right here is starting to hurt because I'm holding the bracelet down like this. But I'm almost done. Okay, so this is the base string. I'm not cutting it off. So the last one, I'm going to do a forward backwards knot. So it's going to be like this. Yeah, it's like turning inwards like that. So when I'm starting to do the actual bracelet, I'm going to do another backwards forwards on this one so now that we're done it's gonna look like this okay this is no use to me no more i don't need this anymore um and i don't yeah so it is 12 in total but i'm gonna show you exactly how i do it what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a forward well it's actually backward and i'm gonna do a forward instead so when I do not on it, like, it's just not on my face. Okay, so now that I got that done, what I'm going to do is meet them up like this and then put them on the clipboard afterwards. Like this. Mm. My 
that is good. That's good. Okay. Now, this one is non-existent to me and I don't care about it. And then, okay, so now that I remember I did the whole forwards, backwards. Okay, so what I do is I take the string that I used that one with and I pull it behind all these other strings. So it's going to be like this. And now what I'm going to do is make sure I like to just pull it up a little like that. And then I grab the first string and I'm going to do a backwards and then forwards knot. So I hate when like the string gets hooked onto the binder because it's so annoying. Okay, backwards and then forwards knot like this. There you go. Okay, see? And now we're going to get started. Okay, so this is how I normally do it all the time all the time okay so now that i'm looking at the pattern first things first i make sure that i have my pattern here next to me well i usually just fold this in half the paper in half i will fold it in half like this and then i'll grab another binder clip like a fine oh there's one right here put this paper right here put the binder clip like right here next to it and then there so i don't have to like have the paper somewhere else okay so we did say that this was 11 strings because it is i counted it i usually count it two times to make sure and it is 11 strings so i did my first knot and now I'm going to keep going until I reach like the end. So like for example, this string is like non-existent because it just doesn't it's 11. We only need 11 strings, not 12. So that's basically how I do it. Okay. And that's it. That's how I do it, like just like that. There, now we got our first row done. And now we're going to go on to the second row. And yeah, basically, that's how I do it. That's how I do the odd number ones. Obviously, if it was even, I would include that one string. Um, sometimes when um, I'm doing like this part, I can sometimes take the string out. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. I would probably, I'm going to do another video on how to just start it off step by step. But this video is just showing you the process of how I started to do my alphas. I'm not teaching you how to do knots or anything like that. It's just kind of like a not with me type thing because I have nothing else to do. <laughs> and I really wanted to make a video for my channel because I haven't made one in a long time. Um, I do work a lot. So that's another reason why I don't really have time to be on here. But yeah, so then you obviously do the backwards knots. There's a lot of good videos out there on how to do alpha bracelets, though. Um, I've always wanted to do one for the longest, but I just never got to it. So then now we're going to insert the red into this one. So I usually just start. I, I'm kind of like messy when it comes to my strings. I don't organize them at all i hardly ever organize anything so like i bought like a ton of new dmc string the other day when i was at work and then i got home and they've just been sitting there ever since I haven't even bothered organizing i haven't bothered doing anything because when i'm off like i just don't even want to do anything i just want to be off and be home so like i'll tape it like right here on this side and then what i would do is I'll grab this string, pull it underneath all this, 
all these strings right here and then make well I think I would usually make I don't think it matters probably a forward a forward knot go like this and then do a backwards knot because I am inserting the red so we need three reds and that's what I'm doing like that okay and then you obviously take this one out of the way and then the next two are reds and that's how I do it and then I just kind of pull on this a lot because sometimes you can see like the string where it went in through like you could see it sometimes and I just pull on to it scoot it up my nail or whatever and then I go on to the next one and yeah that's pretty much what I do when I make um, my alphas and how I insert it after like I get maybe I would say like maybe like right here I'm gonna take all of this apart and then cut the tape off cut all the back strings off and everything because I feel more um I don't feel more at, like a mess because I feel like right now it's just like a big mess like I have these strings hanging out and it's just so messy to me like I don't like it but yeah today I'm off I don't work today um I they actually gave me Saturday and Sunday off like miraculously they gave me those days off because working at Walmart is like it's like I sold my life away. It's like I sold my life away. I swear. Cause I work my shift is one to ten, but it's it's that's like the entire day. So like when I go in, sometimes like because the sun's been going down a lot early lately. Um it still goes down around like six o'clock. So sometimes I do take lunch like around six and then when I come out of work it's dark. And it just makes me really sad because I'm like, dang, like, I missed the entire day just being here. Um, but, yeah. So, I do, like, the position I have at Walmart is um, stocking associate. So, like, what I do is, like, a bunch of inventory at Walmart. And then, like, I just separate stuff per aisle in the back room. And then once, like once the um semi is unloaded like i have all the they basically give me like all the junk to separate two three four five and yeah that's what i do at walmart and then like at the end of the day when i'm done doing everything i have to um take everything out to the sales floor um per department because walmart is by department as well you know like pets area and they have the chemicals and then they have um electronic area and hardware yeah so i basically have to take all that stuff out to the sales floor once i'm done separating it and i'm pretty much done but it does take up all day to do all that stuff depending on how much merchandise comes in but yeah i mean i like the job it's just the shift is really like it's really sometimes I get really overwhelmed because I'm like you know I don't want to be gone home all day especially since I'm a mom and I don't get to see my child but in a way um it's okay for now be I'm not planning on working there for the rest of my life it's just for now because I just moved back from Minnesota and I really wanted a job and um they actually told me if i wanted to get a job back there and i'm like yeah i guess i could do it um but i really wanted the stocking um department where i was because that's where i was when i first got hired at walmart and i really like it versus like because i wasn't online grocery for a while but i absolutely hated it like i hated it the hours were all right but i could never for like like seriously for i could never wake up at eight in the morning like i just couldn't i was so my body was so used to getting up like around 11 that waking up at eight was so hard for me it was like i couldn't do it i just couldn't and then i found a way to get out of there 
out of the department but yeah it was horrible dealing with customers is no it's a big giant no for me because oh mm, mm, my god sometimes some customers were so rude they were like so rude and they would just say like the meanest things when covid first came out someone was like oh you're not wearing a mask you're gonna die or whatever like girl bye worry about yourself anyways yeah but that's pretty much that about that not like anyone cares but i'm just talking okay so now i have this part done you know this right here because you know like at the end um what i do is i grab this and i grab this string well i grab these two strings together i go over both of them like this but then like i just go over the white mini take this out of my face that and then like do another forward knot like this and that's how i do that part like that there you go and then now nah, yeah that's how i do it so now we're going on to the two, three, fourth row. I'm gonna add like the white eyeballs. I know there's like a whole flat technique or something like that. I honestly don't like it. Um, I really like the, I really like the whole squiggly line vibes. <laughs> I like it a lot um but i do use the flat alpha technique i do use it a lot um i first seen it on this girl that i follow on my instagram her name is um milko i saw her videos on there and how she actually explains it and it's, she's from russia so she explains it in russia in russian or whatever and i can't understand but just by looking at her doing it like that's where i first saw it from and then i saw the videos on youtube and i'm like oh okay like that's actually a thing like you know you can do it differently but i used to make them like really I try to make them like flat. Sometimes they'll come out good, sometimes they wouldn't. Till finally, like, you know, there's actually someone who explained it and it's like, wow, there's actually a thing out there like that. But yeah. So now we're getting to the eyeballs. I'm just gonna use the same white that I have on here. So I'm gonna make two reds. like this I'm just like real time nodding at the moment real time nodding this is how I normally do my bracelets all the time I just grab my iPad put on some one piece because that's what I'm watching right now because I was watching a novella <laughs> I was watching some novellas like I watch novellas from Univision a lot um, but I already finished watching the novela. It's called Teresa on Univision, and I already watched it. And now I'm watching One Piece again because, um, sometimes I do watch a lot of crime shows on Hulu, and I watch a lot of YouTube like true crime stuff. And it's really good. I like true crime. Um, I think the ones I don't like are the ones that are not solved. So it's kind of like you don't even know what's going on or what happened to the person or anything. And it's really sad because, you know, you would like to know. And, of course, the family would love to know what happened to their loved ones. And I think those ones are the saddest ones. Um, and the ones that where, you know, you don't know who committed the crime are also really sad because you know you want justice for your family and oh my god it's crazy but yeah i do watch a lot of that stuff i'm really a paranoid person so i do think negative all the time i'm a really negative person when it comes to like life so like good things could be going on in my life at the moment and then i start to just feel like you know why is everything going so great like something bad is definitely gonna happen to me 
and I'm just basically waiting on it because right now my life is so peaceful <laughs> it's like really peaceful and I'm really blessed and grateful to God but I just can't like shake off the fact that like you know what if something happens to me you know something bad is bound to happen to me that's what I feel but I have to stop thinking like that because it's really negative and it's really bad for me but anyways yeah that's how I am I can't help myself honestly okay so that's I already did that Okay, so I already did this part and basically just scoot this up a little bit. And now I'm going to take this all off and try to cut this stuff off of here. I don't normally tape this on the paper, but I did it at the moment because the paper is in my way. So this is how the back looks. So what I would do is I'll cut this piece off right here. Which I did on the camera. And then just throw it away and then these pieces are the two white strings that didn't end up using so yeah that's how it looks uh, I kind of feel like the loop is a little too big but whatever I'm okay with it I'm okay with it, but I'm like, I'm kind of like not okay with it, but I'm okay with it, but I'm not okay with it. It's kind of bothering me, but it's kind of not bothering me. I don't know. Do you ever feel like that? I always feel like that a lot when it comes to my bracelets. But yeah, this is how it would look. And then I'm just going to basically keep going until like I, yeah, until I'm done with it. And I'll post it on my Instagram. By the way, my Instagram is at by Brandy Ann. I do have an Etsy. It's called at by Brandy Ann as well. Okay, so now I'm going to insert the black. I did take my flash off because I don't know why I just did to see how it would look. And now I'm going to insert the black in here. So I'm going to cut some tape off. By the way, I use this scotch tape that I got at Walmart. Um, it's called masking tape, actually, but it's like scotch tape. So I'm going to insert the black and I'm going to put it like on this side right here like this and then I'm gonna insert it um normally what I would do with this is I would just literally have the whole bobbin hanging onto it so like I would just use it like this with the whole bobbin on it the whole entire time but since I am already like running out of black, like it's not even as much, I'm just gonna unwind it and take all of it off because I'm pretty sure it's not gonna last me any longer. So it's just pointless to have the whole bobbin hanging on still. But yeah, so this is how I mark um, the bobbin, like the number. I take like the bottom piece cause I know every DMC strand comes with this, uh, like the number on it and stuff. So I just put it on the bobbin like this and I wrap the string around it and that's how I do it. But since I don't really need this anymore, since I'm already done, I'll throw it out away and then I'll just keep this for another um, string that I'm gonna like wrap up on there. So yeah, so now I entered the black and these are the only three colors that we are gonna be, well, that I'm gonna be using for this bracelet and I'm just gonna keep going until I'm done. So yeah, pretty much this is the process of me making an alpha friendship bracelet. I'm going to just keep knotting and then I'll show you how I finish it off and yeah.
I know the lighting looks a little different. It's because it's morning time already and I took off my flash and I also turned off my ring light. So I just using the natural light that's coming out of my window. I'm finally almost done with the bracelet and I'm finishing it off. Um, I will be making a video on how I end my friendship bracelets. I don't know if anybody does it, but I did just do it on my own one day and I like how it looks. So that's exactly how I do it every single time I make an alpha. Okay, so I'm finally twisting the ties at the end. This can be a little tricky sometimes because the ties do sometimes don't want to stay, I mean. So I try to get them as even as possible because I do not like one longer than the other. And I just cut the bottom off, whatever is left, and I throw it away. Okay, so this is the finished bracelet. Um, I will be releasing another video soon. I did order a bunch of bracelets on Etsy and I want to review them. I cannot wait till they come in. And as you can see, this is the back of it. I am also going to be making a video on how I end my friendship bracelets, my alpha friendship bracelets, and how I begin them. So stay tuned for that.